Hello and welcome to Hungerheide for the ninth and final round of the UCI Telenet Cyclocross World Cup. We're in the Netherlands for this final event in absolutely perfect conditions. And we've got 56 of the world's very best cyclocross riders getting set to do battle on this uh, iconic, super challenging and absolutely glorious cyclocross course set out for the riders in the Grand Prix Adrie van der Poel. Famous cyclocross champion of this uh, region, this town. His son, of course, has uh, superseded him in many ways in the affections of the, the watching public locally and indeed further afield. Standings, though, in the cyclocross World Cup, being led by the Belgians with two arts heading potentially towards a second successive title. Ellie is a bit uh, something to say about that, as indeed does Michael Van Turen out. Lawrence Vecht, the Belgian champion, still has a mathematical chance, albeit an outside one. Lars van der Haar, Kenton Hermans, uh, Corne van Kessel, Jenny Vermeersch, Mathieu van der Poel, the crowd favourite, also in the top ten, as indeed is Ty Sertz. All the focus is going to be on the, uh, the battle for the Cyclocross World, World Cup. Uh, standings, but as I say, Tunarts has a very handy advantage of 41 points. You might say it's all done and dusted for him. He will, though, be looking to complete the season without the, uh, the unloved statistic of having not won a round. That's the way it looks at the moment. And he is a bit managed to uh, dispense with his ambitions last week. And Tunarts, the tall figure in that white skin suit, will he still have it at the conclusion of today's activities? Lawrence Weck is the Belgian national champion taking that. Uh, Glorious title a couple of weeks ago, four wins this season. Michael Van Turenhout, just two wins this season, both of them back in October. Third, though, in round two and round three of this series. Quentin Hermans, well, the two wins himself this season. Lars van der Haar has been a victor here in Hugerheide in the past, the local man, former European champion. Is this, uh, this terrain and this particular track. Johnny Vermeersch, it's eighth in the standings, eighth in Nome a week ago, fifth in the equivalent event 12 months ago here in Hogerheide. As a hush descends over the crowd and indeed over the riders, 56 of whom are getting set to do battle. 30 seconds before they get the off and they will charge up the 125 meter climb across the start line and begin this uh, final round of the World Cup. Mark beats across the PA replicating those on the riders. Look at Lars van der Haar, crouched low over the bars. And they're away, and we're into action in Hogerheide. The whole shot, who's going to get it? As they charge up across the line, and then, well, another 100 meters or so, and they've got a hard ride, and up and over the, the short little carpeted climb. Lars van der Haar, who seemed most intent, and he looks like he's got a pretty good start. So too as the world champion and the local favourite, Matthew van der Poel. Listen to the crowd cheer, because from the second row, he's come piling through, and without any apparent difficulty, is already in the lead. Two darts up into second position. The World Cup leader has put himself into prime position, but he's on the wheel of the very best. Four times a winner in Hogerheide, Matthew van der Poel has got the ideal getaway. Scrapping down in the middle of the field, trying to make up positions in the early standings. It was Van der Poel that got the ideal getaway ahead of uh, Tunarts. Quinton Hermans, good start from him as well. Corny van Kessel, well to the fore. Jenny Vermeersch, Joris Neuvenhaus, Tim Merlier, and the rest. And this is if the other races we've seen today it's going to be a key appointment, a key moment here through this right hander. Everyone trying to stay off that white pad. That tree has cut many a rider out, and that, that was perhaps the cleanest that we've seen any of the four races through on that first lap at that particular point. Oh, it does, it has claimed one or two riders a bit later in the event. Keep an eye out for it. Lawrence Vec through shot, trying to stay on terms with the leaders. Tenth through the last time check. Scrambling to get on the back of the, uh, the lead group. Paul was uh, towards the back of that group, the uh, the German rider. 
Oh, and that was just a momentary little issue for Toon Arts. His wheel stepping out, but the Belgian rider, World Cup leader in second position, has put it behind him. What about White Van Art in the yellow and black colours of Team Jumbo Visma, the former world champion, following that horrific injury in the Tour de France last year, has got himself fit again. And he thought that he'd have no chance of getting himself fit for any sort of performances in this year's cyclocross season. Well, he's second yesterday, second to Van der Poel, albeit by 30 seconds, but signs that the form is really coming back. What about Van der Poel? Past the corporate boxes, the crowd is three deep right the way around this three-kilometer circuit, and they've come here fundamentally to see one man. Well, not entirely, but a lot of them have indeed, and uh, Matthew van der Poel, the local favorite, has got the all-important early advantage, and he really is firing those, uh, that bike into those corners. To make the most of this, and Toon Arts has a little bit of daylight between himself and the third place rider. Anton Hermans is crouched low over the bars. Thomas van der Aar, after his uh, enthusiastic start, finds himself a little bit further back than he might like. Ninth through the last time check. Van der Poel with Toon Arts, the world champion and the World Cup leader. The only two riders in shot were still early on the first lap. Remarkable stuff as other riders tried to... Yaris uh, uh, Neuvenhaus, the Team Sunweb rider, just trying to come up and uh, cross the rest. But Van Aert is, has got plenty of fans in the crowd here. We're only just a few kilometers from the Belgian border. Uh, for all that I said, that Matthew van der Poel is the big local favourite and much of the crowd are here for him. I can tell you there are plenty of others that are here for White Van Aert and his fellow countrymen. Great mix. Great atmosphere. It's been building through the day. Fueled to a certain extent by beer, but uh, perfect decorum and behaviour from all of the spectators. And they've come here to see a bike race. And they're getting it at the moment. Toon Arts staying on terms with Matthew van der Poel in the early stages. Still the first lap, early moments of this three-kilometer circuit. Not times to, uh, to think about. It's about a six-and-a-half-minute lap it was the, the best that the junior men managed. Didn't see a time for the under-23s, but something of that order is what we're going to see once we get the... The lap time starting to come in. Matthew van der Poel. Up and across the jumps, almost no one has managed to do that today, but the first two riders, Neuvenhaus too, has the skills. Not the only one. Such impressive ability throughout the ranks. Pickcock off. Van Aert uh, choosing to jump as well. For all that you can do it on the first lap, it'll be interesting to see how many riders can do it on the last lap. They are very, very tall boards, I can tell you. Bit of momentum carried into them, bit of momentum carried out of them. And here is the first time we're going down this, uh, plunging down this drop-off. And it's Matthew van der Poel that is going to own it as he throws the bike at this uh, sandy descent. Brief but precipitous. And he and Toon Arts with that several bike lengths advantage over Hermans, uh, Neuvenhaus and the rest. Up the steps for the first time. Toon Arts still on terms with the outright favorite for the event. Only two riders have won World Cup events this year. Ellie Isabet taking the first three rounds before Mathieu van der Poel arrived into his cyclocross season after an extended road race season. He's having to manage his efforts and manage his rest and recovery. Van der Poel missing uh, from Nome last week as he tries to make the decision about uh, what events to, to target, which ones to miss. The World Championships loom a week from now in Switzerland. There was a little bit of a shenanigans and a bit of a get-together as they approach the finish line there. But it's uh, Van der Poel and Toon Arts that are safely clear of the rest as Neuvenhaus comes on terms and decides to attack. He's going to try and uh, winch a bit of a group clear and Matthew Van der Poel, for the first time since this race began, finds himself a little bit further behind. Albeit still very much in that lead group. Let's uh, scroll through the top ten as they cross the line. One lap complete. Joris Neuvenhaus it was. 
Let's get a look at that, and that was quite the jostle, wasn't it? Well, quickly back on the pedals. Tim Merlier, so no harm, no foul. Maybe a bit of discussion after that. Get a bit lane, and one of the uh, riders takes on a bike. You know, the, the, the conditions are absolutely perfect, so the visits to pits in the races so far today have been really to a minimum. It's been very little uh, pit activity. One or two riders uh, coming to grief, chains uh, breaking, etc. But scheduled visits to clear clogged drive trains, few and far between. Now towards the back of that group, the British national champion Tom Pickcock, 13th through the last time check. Nuvin House it was that led them across the line at the conclusion of uh, lap one. We're on to lap, uh, lap two now. Quinton Hermans, Michael Van Turenhout, Tunarts, Mathieu van der Poel, Eliezerbit, Corne van Kessel, Lawrence Vecht, the uh, Belgian champion, Lars van der Haar in uh, ninth place, Jennifer Mirsch, Tom Meussen, and the rest. Matt van Aert, I can tell you, 12th in the current standings through the shot there, just behind Tom Meussen. in yellow and black will watch his progress with interest to see whether the form is coming ahead of uh, Switzerland next week. Eros Nuvenhaus looks like he's on a good day. Tunarts has resumed after that little attack from Nuvenhaus in, in a nice uh, third place. Matthew van der Poel in fifth. Daylight uh, starting to develop through the uh, through the field, but still a lot of riders in contention. Early stages, though, of course. Remember this comfortably the longest race of the day, and we're going to find out exactly how many laps they'll be racing for. At the conclusion of this lap, they'll make the calculation, work out exactly the the average speed of the riders and what uh, what they can expect. The banner the banner is indicating that the wind has uh, whipped up a little bit. For all that, though, it's fundamentally perfect conditions for the riders. Tom Pickock on the back of that group in 13th place. Seven seconds back in total, so still very much uh, in contention. And it's a group of 13 that are starting to develop minor advantage over uh, Tice Arts, who led impressively in the early stages of last week's World Cup event in Nome. Van der Poel leading the group further back. His brother safely ensconced in fifth at the moment and I think satisfied with the way things have panned out across the first couple of laps. No complications, no difficulties. And he'll leave it up to the likes of Newman House and the rest to set the agenda. Pitcock has to make an effort to get on terms. The British champion, world under 23 champion of course, Racing with the elites this season. Racing uh, under the colours of well, British national champion, but uh, he's Trinity Sports Management is the, the team he's registered with. Trinity Racing, I think, is the uh, official term. Novan House is uh, Team Sunweb rider. Tunarts just uh, trying to maintain position and a bit of a traffic jam through that left-hander. No serious difficulties for riders, but that <coughs> tends to create a bit of a concertina effect. Riders get away and manage to open up a little bit of uh, bike length. A couple of bike lengths lead. It requires a chase from those behind and that's expansion and contraction of the, of the group eventually leads to tears particularly for those that are uh, uh, riding behind. That's why it's just a little bit uh, less complicated if you're on the front, albeit there could be a little bit of difficulty across the wind. What about that from Van Turen out? Uh, two Nards, Nuvenhaus and the rest. Many in that group choosing to step off, including Pickcock at the back. And Red Van Aert now. Sitting in 10th position. Or is it 11th? 11th indeed, for all that matters. He's still very much in that group. And Turin out in the lead in the early stages. The 26-year-old Belgian, the Pavel's Sousen squad. 
a couple of third place finishes this year in uh, Waterloo and Bern in rounds two and three. So the beginning of the season went uh, particularly well for him. A couple of wins in October in his season, but they're his only victories. And since then, he's been looking for the big result. Seventh in the national championships a couple of weeks ago. Lawrence Veik got the win on that occasion. Zweig is uh, 11th in this bike race at the moment. He's in that group. Just see him, well, sitting ninth as it uh, changes around a little bit. Still very much a compact group. Can't afford to stay at the back of that group for too long. There's one thing riding in the wheels, another thing riding at the back of the group and finding that uh, other riders are starting to open up a little bit of an advantage. Van Turen out ahead of Toon Arts, Neuvenhaus, and then Matthew van der Poel in prime position gets a clean run at it. All, that off camber section is really unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's complicated enough to walk it, let alone ride it. And we have seen the problems for other riders in that section already today, dealt with comfortably by all of the leaders on the second lap. Two laps completed. And Michael Van Turen out has the honor of leading the group across the line. Head of Arts, Neuvenhaus, Iserbit, Van der Poel, uh, Vermeersch, Quinton Hermans, Corny Van Kessel, Vec, Musen, Van Art, Pitcock there, thereabouts. They scroll through. Massive efforts being made on the asphalt section to get back into contention, up and over the jump. Through these uh, early moments, we're in the Meadowland section, as they call it, which makes up the vast majority of this uh, three kilometer track that they've laid out here. Very much of a theme, although they change it every year, change it in many and various ways. It all amounts to a similar sort of challenge for the riders. Same starting places uh, as each year. Lars van der Haar now at the back of the group. Two Nerts, the World Cup leader, hits the front. Starts to stretch them thin. Mathieu van der Poel finds himself slipping back through the group a little bit. It's wise. Is this anything he has any... Uh, any call over, any choice? Well, I suspect he's very much in control at the moment. But you'd never know. He slips a little bit further back, so is there a little bit of difficulty? Is he just uh, taking a little micro rest? On the wheel of White Van Aert, how many battles have they had over the years? Van Aert, just as he decides to start thinking about moving up a little bit, because there's a, a definitely a possibility that that group behind could start to, to get involved. That's Dan Suter, number 25, that was just leading that, uh, that group just behind. Tunarts desperately wants to finish the World Cup season as the winner. And take that jersey and by right. Eli is uh, there thereabouts, still in the top three runners, so they won't be too far apart, those riders. They haven't been all year. But Art still to taste victory, taste the glory of it, and uh, enjoy the top step of the podium. Step could be his if he's collecting a white jersey at the end of today, but uh, he'd like the win. He wants to scratch that itch. Enjoyed World Cup success in the past. Heading, of course, towards a second successive win in the World Cup series, but wants to do it in style. At the moment, putting himself in prime position, getting first sight of the obstacles around this course. On the third lap, eight laps remaining. 10 lap race. Seven and a half laps remaining, you might say. Oh, 
And we're just over halfway through this lap. I can tell you the lap time uh, on lap one. Fastest lap time going to Joris uh, Neuvenhaus. Six minutes and 21.7 seconds. An average speed, I kid you not, of 26.41 kilometers per hour, given that they're riding through a plowed field. They're getting off their bike on at least a couple of occasions around the lap. That's pretty impressive stuff. As Van der Haar tries to scoot around the outside. Tom Pickock still at the back of the group. He's in contention. Thirteenth position up front, though. Toon Arts with Michael Van Turen out for company. Ali is a bit the diminutive figure. Sitting in third place. Just on the, the tail of his teammate, Van Turen out. Van Turen out rides across the logs, uh, or across those jumps, and it uh, enables him to stay in position in second place, just ahead of Isabit. He looks like he's hit the front. Ahead of Toon Arts, Neuvenhaus in third, Isabit in fourth. Still, Mathieu van der Poel loiters towards the back of the group. Giving the riders a little bit further ahead the, the sense that maybe, just maybe, he's hitting problems. Could it be his day? Mathieu van der Poel is going to attack the drop off here in the company of others. It's Turin out that owns it ahead of, uh, of Arts, Neuvenhaus. Is our bit. Safely through that, Corner Van Kessel at the back of the group. Turin out first up the steps. Toon Arts looks like he's uh, still full of punch, full of fight. Pickock finds himself on that uh, treacherous lower track. It's useful. Allows him to, self to go to the inside of Matthew van der Poel and stay there. Stay uh, very much in contention in the group, but it is uh, a dangerous game to play. Certainly less grip there there is on that than there is on the slightly higher channel that more riders used across the line. Look at the speed. And turn out. Breaks the beam to complete three laps. Joris uh, Neuvenhaus, Toon Arts, Lars van der Haar et al. Very much in, uh, in company, and it's Arts that moves to the front. Past the pits. Anyone going to head in? Not just now. Everyone seems satisfied with their uh, their tire pressures. Ellie Isabit and Michael Van Turen are their teammates, of course. So whether that offers uh, Isabit some sort of an opportunity, perhaps in his uh, his dreams of overhauling, is a massive advantage, isn't it? 41 points the lead for two nights in this World Cup, and given that there are a maximum of 80 uh, for the win, you'd say, well, it's certainly. Very much uh, a possibility should Tunarts hit any difficulty, but there's quite a haul of points all the way down to 50th place. Uh, even 10th place in this race will pay 42 points. So should Tunarts have a relatively trouble-free run, you would imagine he was going to be able to score enough points to retain his advantage of 41 points. No matter what uh, Isabit did, 10th would be good enough for for two artists. Matthew van der Poel still in that group, just steps out the back wheel ever so slightly. What are the concentration levels like? The body like? He was racing yesterday, of course. Took a nice win.
many of these riders indeed involved in uh, in yesterday's race. Vanderpool taking a comfortable win in Zonabeka. 35 seconds to the good ahead of Wout van Aert at the conclusion of uh, yesterday's race. Hans Adams in third. Bosman's uh, is a bit was uh, fifth, I can tell you. It's all as nothing compared to today's World Cup event. Altogether more important. Castle still at the back of this group. Just in front of him, Johnny Vermeersch. Matthew van der Poel, next man up. Pitcock starting to move up. We saw a sign of the intent last lap round. He was going through the off-camera section. Starts to put the pressure on, and that's uh, putting those that would close the gap under a little bit of pressure. Jens Adams and uh, David van der Poel trying to get into contention. That's Orts, the uh, national champion of Spain, leading that group through. Behind and at a bit of a distance, sitting in 18th position, 17 seconds behind the leader. And Turin out at front, two Arts. Elizabeth in third, Nuvenhaus in fourth. Then Wout van Aert has worked his way up and into fifth position. Tom Pickcock just moving up and into sixth. Lawrence Vec uh, now finds himself towards the back of that group. Still very much a watch and breathe from Matthew van der Poel. Bit of a surprise. I mean, you know, we've seen him do one or two laps and then just uh, light the afterburners. Is this going to be one of those uh, slightly difficult days for him? Or is he just playing a bit of a cat and mouse game, just letting the others exhaust themselves, or maybe just uh, trying to retain a bit of energy and just get himself going, get himself up for the big push? An amazing season so far. Lost the jumps without any great difficulty, so. Vanderpool maintains a position safely inside the top ten. And here comes the push. Looks to move ahead of Wout van Aert. Does so comfortably. And I think another uh, one was about to be claimed by some of this man. Adri van der Poel, himself a winner of this race. In uh, 1998 was the end of his career. A career that included victory, of course, in the World Professional uh, Cyclocross Championships. He uh, was it six times second place finisher in that. Great road career as well, of course, which included victory in the Tour of Flanders in 1988. Pickcock looking to move up, and Neuvenha or sorry, Neuvenhaus it is, who's just uh, moving up and onto the tail of Eliezerbeth, who leads them. They charge down the hill out of Neuvenhaus. At the back of the group, Tim Merlier. So involved in that little shenanigan. Oh, it was a big problem. Oh, what was that? It was extraordinary. You're trying to run back to get your bike, and you just assaulted. Uh, that's uh, Marcel Meissen, the German national champion. I don't know how many uh, riders were impeded, and it was clumsy enough stuff, wasn't it? But, well, that's uh, for the minor positions at the moment. Marcel Meissen, the national champion of Germany in the wars. Uh, meanwhile, further ahead, there's a bit of a gap, is there a bit? No. Pitcock brings the rest onto the tail of uh, Toon Arts, the World Cup leader. It's is a bit that leads them across the line to complete lap four. Is a bit ahead of Nuvenhaus, Toon Arts, Lars van der Hart, Wout van Aert. Sorry, Pitcock was fourth across. Uh, Van Turen had Quinton Hermans, Matthew van der Poel still safely there. Starting to move up though. Onto the tail of Toonarts. It's Pitcock that leads. 
British champion. First time we've seen those colours at the head of affairs as Toon Arts wants to assert his authority a little bit. He knows where he wants to be. Stay up front, stay out of trouble. Still a big group involved. Indeed, it's starting to swell in size a little bit. Sense perhaps that the well, Toon Arts did a 6 minute 37 lap last lap round. Previous lap 6.31, previous lap 6.36, 6.22 was the opening tour. So that's his second slowest, oh sorry, his uh, yeah, so slowest lap. That tells the tale, doesn't it? It's allowing other riders to get into contention. Now the top 14, 15 riders still very much uh, in one long ribbon as they work their way through this forest section. Three kilometers in total. We've got 18, about 18% of it, 18% on the asphalt. Includes the lap, and begins the next one. Uh, the meadow section that they're just on now is uh, about 71% of the forest section they've just emerged from, 11% of the lap. The forest section is pretty significant. To say the least, one of the few places that you can make the difference. the Brabant region, or North Brabant, as it's uh, the province of North Brabant, albeit it's very much in the southern part of the Netherlands, We're right on the border of Belgium, not too far from the coast, now towards the west, various channels and inlets, not too many um, canals in this uh, region, there are not too many hills either, as you would expect, but it's uh, mostly above sea level. Agriculture here, it's beautiful, it's beautiful country. It's beautiful cycling country indeed, really, really popular. Just uh, droves of cyclists out in groups, ones, twos, and then larger groups for their spins this morning in uh, pretty much perfect midwinter conditions. Two and it is who leads on this fifth lap of ten. Coming up towards the halfway point with the World Cup leader in control ahead of the British national champion Tom Pickock from Yorkshire in England. Ellie is a bit starting to, uh, a few little cracks starting to appear. It's a big, big effort coming on from Toon Arts. He's putting it up to the likes of Lars van der Haar and Lawrence Weck and others who would made huge efforts to get back on and into contention now, finding themselves floundering, including among them Wat van Aert, former uh, triple world champion Wat van Aert in the yellow and black colours at the back of this group is having to make a big effort to get on terms with the current, the reigning world champion, getting set to defend his title a week from now. Matthew van der Poel, he put 35 seconds between himself and Wat van Aert in yesterday's race. Well, Wout van Aert has to make an effort to get back up. He ma successfully manages that, as you, you well you would have expected. But what a great comeback it's been for Wout van Aert after that uh, challenging recovery, it has to be said. He clipped a barrier while he was on his way to a pretty strong result in the... Potentially, indeed, a win, but I think it, was, it might have been the win, but it was, going, it was going to be a very strong result in the uh, second Tour de France time trial last year. And... His recovery compromised uh, somewhat. It took a lot longer than many expected. Indeed, I don't think anyone realized he just how injured he was to begin with. So Toon Arts decides to uh, jump the barriers this time round. Pickcock always going to run over them. Lawrence Veik, it is who has the responsibility of closing this gap up to Wout van Aert. Still, Van der Poel tracks them towards the back of the group. Neuvenhaus, the man directly in front of the world champion. And now we have the move. Here comes Van der Poel up the outside, and at will, he closes the gap and moves straight up onto the tail of Tom Pickcock and into third place. Well, that 
suddenly calls all sorts of shenanigans and he powers up that little climb still stays in third place but i think he just wanted to put himself in prime position and not kind of uh, this is i think for many the most difficult and challenging part of this circuit they plunge down that precipitous little descent it seen uh, too many difficulties for the riders the conditions are absolutely perfect for uh, for racing today but he wants to get in the steps first and moves ahead of Pickcock and up into second place. Van der Poel, is he making his move? Lars van der Haar towards the back of that group, former winner of this race, knows what it takes. Still Arts in the lead. And van der Poel, happy enough just to sweep his way along, as indeed are most of the other riders. Now we have it, here's the attack, it's Lawrence Wick. Gets on the group, immediately tries to put a bit of daylight, that's the right way to play it. Matthew van der Poel's the first to react, he's going to try and close this one down. Eli Izerbet is there or thereabouts. Lars van der Haar finds himself in a difficult moment with Tim Merlier. The rest are also rounds. That is a big, big moment, big attack from Lawrence Wick, and he's drawing some of the big stars clear, including the world champion, the local favourite, four times the winner of this event in the past. Whoa, and he slides it through. Superb skills from uh, Matthew van der Poel. He can do anything, can he? Izerbet fighting to stay in the wheel of the world champion. Two arts right there. Pidcock has had to respond. A few little cracks uh, developing as Wet van Aert sees that he has to close the gap to Michael van Turenhout just in front of him. Now we have a little bit of a reset. Lawrence Veig tries to catch his breath, takes the road less traveled. As Van der Poel goes to the right-hand side, it seems to be a division of thought on the best uh, rut to stick your front wheel into as you went down that little descent. Everyone trying to stay off that tree that they put the white padding on. Neuven House at the back of the group now. He was leading not so long ago. All change at the front. Zweig from Matthew van der Poel, Elisabeth, Tunarts, Pidcock with a little bit of a, a gap to close. And Turin out just behind him with uh, Wout van Aert in close attendance. Clinton Hermans has managed to uh, get up and into this group. Stay in it. Boris van der Haar finds himself off the back. Uh, the red rider just in front of him, or a little bit further in front that he would like, is Joris Neuvenhuis. Further back, and it's a difficult time for Corny van Kessel, who's hit the leaders for a while. David van der Poel is, is uh, Matthew's uh, brother, is on his wheel. But it's all about uh, Zweig up front. Took his Belgian national championship success a couple of weeks ago. Four wins this season. Third place uh, bronze medal in the European Championships as well. Zweig was third in Nome a week ago, so he's, he's on good form, there's no doubt about it. Belgian Championships followed by a third in the in the World Cup. He's timing it right. Van der Poel. He's a tall rider, isn't he? But he really chucks the bike around. You know, they say that the, uh, the best cyclocrossers tend to be just that bit shorter. They've got the lower center of gravity. Theoretically gives them an advantage in the, in the technical sections, but the, the skills that uh, Matthew van der Poel and others can bring to the party to make up any potential deficit. And it's Van der Poel in the front, listen to the crowd cheer. Well, he's the man they've come to see, he's hit the front, is this the moment? Lawrence Weck is uh, struggling to respond to that one already and almost instantly there's a couple of bike lengths. This is a full-blooded attack, this is the gun for glory oh, now. Zweck tries to cover it, Elizabeth knows that this is the moment if he wants to go score back-to-back -back World Cup successes needs to stay with van der Poel now Matthew van der Poel gets the applause and the encouragement of the local crowd Lawrence Vick doesn't seem to have any answer to the sheer power of Matthew van der Poel five laps completed we're on lap six four to go next time round we're about halfway around this lap at the moment 
It's a bit beyond it. A little look over the shoulder, nothing to see. Van der Poel, you're in your own race now. Have I spoken too early? Complicated little left-hander that, and he has to dab. That's another moment you can tell the pressure that Lawrence Weck is under to try and close this gap. Iserbet doesn't seem to be able to do it. Can't come round Zweck. Zweck can't uh, get to Van der Poel. Well, you were wondering after leading early on whether Van der Poel was just uh, feeling the pinch a little bit after all the efforts he's made recently. The full season. Showing it at the moment, isn't he? He does. He's comfortable, isn't he, with the bike moving around. He's also pretty comfortable jumping uh, the bike across those. Others need to step off. Not so two arts helping him to stay in contention. Pitcock elects to jump the uh, the boards for the first time. He's been running over them. Pitcock sitting fifth as things currently stand. So now, Van der Poel, as we survey the scene over Ogerheide today. And he's left the Belgians in his wake. Led by Lawrence Vig. Plunging down on the sand. No complication for Mathieu van der Poel. First attack at the steps for him. Zweig now hands it over to Iserbit and Tunarts to see if they can do anything about closing the gap to Van der Poel. Are they racing for second? Are they even thinking about trying to win? Psychologically, in, in many ways, Matthew Van der Poel has broken so many of these riders. And not, I would say, Eli Iserbit. He's still young enough, he's still developing. And I don't think he's quite uh, uh, ready to accept his status behind Matthew Van der Poel. He would really love to win a World Cup event against him. Three wins already this season for Isabut. Four wins. Four wins indeed for Isabut. Four wins for uh, Matthew van der Poel. So it's uh, honours even between them. Just two riders have won. Zweig is feeling it, isn't he? The gap starting to develop between he and the two, and indeed the three just in front of him. Tom Pidcock is left to. Uh, try and chase it down at a gap of 13 seconds now. Van Turen out and uh, Wout van Aert for company with him. Sure that Wout van Aert is uh, finding the form quick enough to challenge this man for the World Championships in Switzerland next week. That's a long way away. We'll focus on Ogerheide. We'll focus on the final round of the World Cup. Telling at UCI, Cyclocross World Cup for 2019-2020 coming to a conclusion. Mathieu van der Poel, who started his season late, understandably so, given the rigours that he had endured across a uh, longer than expected road race campaign, which uh, went all the way up to the World Championships in Yorkshire. A bruising day out, that was altogether a different proposition. This great weather conditions and a shorter race. His first love is cyclocross born to it and at the moment he's giving the crowd what they want look at those average look at those uh, lap times 622 26.4 kilometers an hour but uh, lap six a new dimension altogether six minutes and ten seconds an average speed of over 27 kilometers an hour i repeat it's pretty impressive stuff considering they actually get off their bike and they're, uh, they're riding through a field. It's just 18% of this uh, circuit is on tarmac. And remember, when they're riding on the tarmac, their bike is uh, altogether less than optimized. With spongy low tire pressures and knobbly tires and flat angles. Bike looks outwardly from a distance similar to a road racing machine. I can tell you it's anything but. Cyclocross bikes are very much optimized for the conditions. Eli Isabeth finds himself in a chair. I mean, he's almost the length of that straight, isn't he? The barriers uh, separating himself from uh, uh, Matthew van der Poel, separating from Eli Isabeth. 
and Toon Arts are in their private battle for the second week in a row. I mean, behind Mathieu van der Poel, they really are the class of the field. Lawrence Veig with uh, Neuvenhaus and the rest from Turin Hat and Wout van Aert and Pidcock uh, all just in line astern. Merlier there, just behind Pidcock. But they are in a different bike race at this moment. Toon Arts just finding himself a few bike lanes behind Ellie Isabeth. They had such a ding dong, didn't they? No, it ebbed and flowed the battle between them. One stage it looked as if uh, Isabel was in great shape. Then it was Toon Arts was had a lot of daylight between himself and his uh, fellow countrymen. Isabel somehow fought his way back up and into contention. Ultimately would take the win. Well, right now you wouldn't bet on it. Gap between them has stretched out to 14 seconds. Isabel continues to pile on the. Uh, Pile on the coal, but it's to little effect in terms of getting any closer to Mathieu van der Poel. Albeit they're starting to put a bit of daylight between themselves and the rest. So it's 12 seconds between uh, Isabel Nartz and the rest led by Joris Neuvenhaus. Time for a quick look over the shoulder for Ali Isabel. It's the information that, uh, well, there's little to see, really. Good bit of daylight between that duo and the riders behind, and indeed between them and the single rider in front, as it's uh, Toon Arts now that takes it up in the chase, in the pursuit of Mathieu van der Poel. Neuvenhaus sweeps to the front ahead of Zweig. And Turin out, Lars van der Hart, Wout van Aert, earlier, Pitcock now at the back of that group. Having been involved and in the hunt across the boards already. On a different planet, isn't he? And jumping them with great facility. Impressive ease. Two arts. Opens up a couple of bike lengths on Ellie Isabel. It's a very useful piece of bike handling. Useful technical advantage uh, for uh, Toon Arts, the World Cup leader, whose World Cup uh, looks assured as things currently stand. He's going to finish the season without the coveted victory. Van der Poel is, as he has so often been over the years, in a personal race. It's just him against the course. He's still a young man, just 25 years of age, coming into his uh, prime years. Well, very much in his prime as a cyclocrosser. And Isabel absolutely flies up that section, negates any disadvantage he may have had jumping over those uh, those planks. Now, the off-camera section needs to be treated with great respect, not particularly complicated. Well, indeed, when you have uh, a clear run at it, altogether less complicated, isn't it? Let's get a look at this again. Oh, oh and you know, when you're tired, it just looks clumsy, but it's so, so tiring for everyone out there. There's Jens Adams. They're banging the boards to send them on their way. Another lap completed for Mathieu van der Poel. Almost 20k of racing now. And the clock counts down. Last we heard, 21 seconds between himself and Tunart's and Ellie Isabet. Still continuing to extend as the chasing duo crossed the mat 22 seconds back. Another second gain between those uh, two sectors. Behind, Lars van der Haar has decided to take his leave of the battle for third place. Neuvenhaus looks to cover it. Lorenz Veik. Got his uh, second wind after that big effort. Michael Van Turen out still there. Pidcock, Merlier. And when he gets clear of the rest, it looks so less complicated. It looks as if he's trying less hard than the rest. In actual fact, of course, he didn't have any particular pressure in terms of uh, skills or technical issues. But the, the sheer speed that he's able to carry into these bends down these little plunging descents. 
Lucky Pegas believe. Quite the ruts. Oh, look at that from Isabel. He likes to chuck the bike around as well, doesn't he? He's got some skills to take to the party. What a useful finish, too. Van der Haar down the outside here. Indeed, are most of the riders. Pickcock, as indeed are the, uh, the rest are, safely through and past that uh, tempting. That, uh, that tempting tree, but it's not, uh, not a risk worth taking getting too close to that white pad. Tunart's on the attack, trying to get race clear of Isabet. Isabet's equal to the challenge on this occasion. There were three laps to go, the last time across the line. About two minutes into this lap, so what do we got? About two and two thirds laps remaining in this final World Cup event of the year. It's a big effort being made. It's up to 23 seconds between uh, our leader, Mathieu van der Poel, and the battle for second. Tunart's the World Cup leader ahead of Ellie Isabet. Managed to get himself back on. But the, the planks beckon. Bit of uh, communication there between Tunart's. And his, uh, his teammate, of course, Lars van der Haar. A little bit of encouragement, perhaps. Van der Poel out front. 22 wins this year, but a mere 22 victories. Uh, from 23 starts, uh, just the, the one blemish, uh, a third place finish in mid-December in, uh, in Ronce, in Belgium. He, was, uh, he said, you just can't win them all. You almost can, it would appear. And remember, folks, we're in the presence of greatness. Surely one of the all-time greats of cyclocross racing. His, his world championship tally would be higher, even at the age of 25. What was this about? A little bit of a... Maybe slow it up a bit. Lars, you don't need to be chasing too hard. I really could do with this second-place finish. They are teammates. There is uh, tactical uh, team play in cyclocross, albeit it's less, not so easy to do, but maybe you just throttle back if you're uh, leading through a little technical section, like that little uh, left-right combination. Everything counts in large amounts. And you're dealing in fractions of a second, as we are in the relatively uh, short uh, distance racing that is cyclocross. Gap, I can tell you, between the leader and the second place uh, Rider Ellie Isabet was through the beam second last time round, 27 seconds the gap. Still leaping the planks, 27 seconds to the good, Matthew van der Poel. Joris Neuvenhuis, I can tell you, in fourth place, 54 seconds back. So 28 seconds the advantage over the leading, G over the, over the uh, second and third place riders, is a bit and two and Joris Neuvenhuis, Lars van der Haar and the rest, 54 seconds back. So that's what, uh, about 26 seconds between the, uh, the battle for second and the battle for fourth. Plunging down. With uh, almost nine laps completed. Coming up to get the bell very shortly for Mathieu van der Poel. And it'll be a no-risk strategy now. He's, uh, his power and indeed his, his ability has given him the advantage. Heading on what will amount to a final victory lap. He's hit the tarmac. Very much in the metaphorical sense, you might, uh, of course, as he 
drapes his forearms across the uh, bars, albeit briefly. He's going to take them up now. Across the finish line. Eight laps completed, I should say, so two to go. Well, both of them will amount to uh, victory tours, won't they? And is a bit throwing it off that uh, sanded descent, sanded drop off. Thirty-one. Every uh, single check, offering further encouragement and delight to Matthew van der Poel and his friends. Up over half a minute now. The advantage over is a bit in arts. Where's the next attack coming from? Lars van der Haar wants to cover it. Matt van Aert is going to take it up on the front. Van der Haar has been given his uh, encouragement from his uh, teammate. Two in arts not to push too hard. Thirty-three seconds between Arts and uh, the White Van Art led group. The battle for second against the battle for fourth. Is a bit happy and content to take it all the way to the edge in his pursuit of this man, Van der Poel. A man apart. Well, he arrived in the elite level straight from juniors, bypassing under 23s, and for Matthew van der Poel, it looked uh, all too easy. He took a world championship in his opening season as an elite. It looked as if he was going to dominate the uh, sport for many years to come. Well, he certainly uh, took victory after victory through the cyclocross season, World Cup successes, uh, and indeed every other type of success in cyclocross for a string of seasons after that. But for some reason, they just had couldn't do anything about the power and strength of Wout van Aert when it came to World Championship time. A trio of victories for the Belgian rider. Putting pay to Mathieu van der Poel's hopes of uh, adding to his list of titles until he managed it. And since then, uh, van der Poel has gone from strength to strength. His Abilities, of course, translating and transferring to the road with great ease and a string of amazing victories over the last couple of years. Not least, of course, that extraordinary victory in Amstel Gold. If you haven't seen it, check it out on, uh, on YouTube. Most amazing win I've ever seen and had the pleasure of calling. Pull, of course, the, he's, uh, he's got a big appointment this year. His season uh, has important, a big agenda in the Spring Classics. His team, Karn and Circus, of course, have been invited to Karn and Alpacine have been invited to the uh, to Paris Roubaix, amongst other races. Many people believe that he's got a big future on the cobbles in northern France. To add to the the pedigree of his uh, of his name, his father Adri, having, as I said, tasted victory in Ronde van Vlaanderen. And he cocks a back wheel out and gives the crowd what they uh, paid in to see. Yes, I mentioned his, uh, his big plans on the road this year, which include the Spring Classics, and he would bet against him scoring a big win in those events, but also, of course, he's got the mountain bike event at the uh, Tokyo Olympics coming up at the end of July. Mathieu van der Poel has also taken part in UCI Mountain Bike World Cup events with great success. 
and he believes that it is on the mountain bike that offers him the best chance of scoring gold for the Netherlands in Tokyo. Amazing addition to his, uh, his career that would be. So now one, uh, well, two more plunge down the drop-off. Twice through the off-camber section. It's a nice camera angle to give you a sense of the of the gradient there. It really is very, very steep indeed. Got to get up these steps as well, of course. The gap between himself and the rest behind. 36 seconds now. Still, two Narts and Ali Izzerbid are welded together. Nothing to choose between them. They, if anything, though, they have uh, slipped a little bit uh, closer to the uh, the group battling for fourth. That includes Wout van Aert, Michael van Turenet, Lars van der Hart, Tim Merlier, Lawrence Zweck, Joris Neuvenhaus, and uh, Tom Pickcox hanging on in there. Corny van Kessel as well. We focus our attention on the man they all came to see. Heading up to get the bell. Three kilometers remaining for Mathieu van der Poel. The best of the rest behind are still on the steps. racing for second so how do they play it they don't really have that much time to coast their way through and up to the line because the others behind are continuing to to pile the pressure on it's about 28 seconds so it's coming down it's still a significant advantage really for this this duo and the the best of the rest behind they've shown themselves to be a class above everyone else in world cyclocross racing over the last few uh, few races with the obvious exception of Mathieu van der Poel, who is in his, uh, he's class A, they're class B, and the rest of them are uh, scrabbling for class C. That's the reality of it, isn't it? Talking about the world's best bike riders in the cyclocross discipline. Full-time pros, just week in, week out, race in, race out. Mathieu van der Poel seems to have a level up. Wout van Aert, though, I think will be encouraged, uh, for all that he doesn't really want to be in the battle for fourth, just to be back on a bike, just racing and looking for condition. It'll be coming from Team Jumbo Visma. I think we'll be encouraged by his uh, cyclocross forays just to get back and into the season. It was an achievement in itself. Can, can he regain the heights, relive old glories? He too will have an appointment with the classic season on the road. Cyclocross is, uh, is his first love, as indeed it is for Mathieu van der Poel, so his focus will be 100%. Well, at the end of this lap, at any rate, on the World Championships next week in Switzerland. And this is the victory tour, isn't it? The lap of honour. He's got the time to savour it. He's got the advantage, and he's starting to, uh, to enjoy himself a little bit and accept the plaudits of the crowd, maintain the focus, but try and soak up the atmosphere as well. Why not? Past the corporate boxes. Turner takes it up on the front in the battle for fourth. Wout van Aert, Lars van der Haar in close attendance. Tim Merlier is battle hard to get in here. Tom Pickcock, Lawrence Veik, Joris Neuvenhaus are the other riders in that group. Corner van Kessel is not too far from it either. Up front, the gap has gone out to 47 seconds. So for all that he's enjoying and soaking up the atmosphere, he's still increasing his advantage. Partly, I think, that's because the, the two behind are starting to uh, engage in a little bit of cat and mouse, and that, you would imagine, will be 
uh, not perhaps to the advantage of Toon Arts. Elizabeth showed himself to be quite a useful finisher in comparison with Toon Arts last week in Nome. There'll be no sprint finish for the win. It's all about this man. We can hear the bell in the background to, uh, to herald other riders that uh, further back that have uh, still got the full lap to do. Meanwhile, he's almost four minutes into this final tour. Van der Poel, a class above. And racing to glory. Ah, behind here comes the attack, and you knew it had to happen. There's no way he can bring Isabit to the line two weeks in a row and expect to get the win. So Toon Arts has gone on the charge. Isabit uh, equal to this one. But there's no question but that Arts will persevere with this one for a while. Safely up and onto his wheel. Where are the other opportunities for an attack? Arts piles it on, but Isabit is safely in the wheel here and getting the advantage of the slipstream. First through that combination, and it's time to uh, maybe try jumping over those. He's got the lead, he's got the advantage. It's a no-risk strategy for Matthew van der Poel, who's cruising to glory. And I do believe that was the only lap that he has actually decided to run across them. Here comes Isabet, just to show to an arts, I'm equal to everything that you can throw at me, and I'm ready to uh, perhaps throw in an attack of my own. Will he wait to, wait to the sprint? Neither of the uh, riders really likes to do that. Is a bit likes to try things, isn't afraid to throw it out there. And Van der Poel is enjoying the moment. He's heading towards his fifth success in Hogerheide. Well, for the first uh, lap, it looked all too easy. Then he decided to settle in to the group of more than 10 riders, play a watching brief, just have a look at what they have to offer, just recover, get a sense of what his rivals uh, might be up to today. And then when he picked his moment, halfway through this race there really was no issue it was all obvious from that moment that there was only one man for the win today Matthew van der Poel is into the closing stages of the Grand Prix Adrie van der Poel the race named after and organized uh, along with a very very organized organizing committee indeed uh, this great event has been running since 1988, the only interruptions for a couple of world championships in 2009 and 2014. The Toon Arts gets an advantage across the uh, boards, as you would have expected, and he's going to try and take that one. We keep an eye on what uh, Matthew van der Poel is up to as he cruises up towards the line. He's getting the victory, arms aloft, and he's going to enjoy the moment. He's given the crowd what they came to see. He's delivered once more, a remarkable 23rd victory of the season and a fifth success in Hogerheide. It's victory once more in the World Cup for Matthew van der Poel. Well, time to savor the experience. The bike is jettisoned and he'll head off and very shortly, I hope we'll hear from Matthew van der Poel. Still, we've got the little business of who's going to finish second, and would you believe it, it's going to be Toon Arts in his own second place this year. He's had four of them in Namur, in Iowa, in Bern, in Nome a week ago. He's going to make it a fifth. He's going to confirm his status as the World Cup champion of 2019-2020. Toon Arts of Belgium is the World Cup champion, and he has bested Ellie Isabed on this occasion. Behind, well, the group managed to just about, but not quite get on terms. Van Turen out gets up for fourth. They're scrapping for the minor positions. Good effort indeed from uh, Wout van Aert for eighth place after his second place finish yesterday in the uh, minor event. Tom Pickcock uh, seventh on the day. Van Aert sixth. Let's make the Belgian champion in ninth. And they all roll exhaustedly across the line. And the way that uh, Van Kessel instantly stops, tells you something about the little gradient up to uh, up to the line, but no difficulties whatsoever for Matthew van der Poel, the class of his generation, and a class above today. Well, we'll uh, bring the rest of the riders across the line as we prepare for the victory celebrations. We'll have the podium for this event and indeed the final podiums for the World Cup standings. Uh, to be presented to you very shortly. We also 
we'll have, we do hope, some reaction from our race winner today, Matthew van der Poel, very shortly. Well, it's a family affair, and Matthew van der Poel himself, uh, one of the leading professionals in cyclocross racing, crossed the line in the top 15 in the family bike race. And everything gets there is prize money, remember, all the way down to remember, down into the uh, top 20 at any rate. Marcel Meissen finishing 17th after his shenanigans at the uh, the planks early on in the race. This is Dieter Zvik, uh, just up and across the line. Dieter van Turenhout, just behind him. Well, in the end, there was really no contest for the World Cup, was there? That uh, Tunart certainly had enough to more than uh, match Ellie Isabel, who really needed a huge amount of daylight between himself and Arts. And indeed, in the end, it was uh, Arts that had the had the legs to distance his rival. But they could do nothing about Matthew van der Poel. He was in a class above the rest, and he was. Uh, quite a way clear indeed by the conclusion. 38 seconds to the good. Let's hear from the man who's made it five wins in Hogerheide. Let's hear from him now. Mathieu van der Poel, congratulations with this, this uh, victory in the Grand Prix of your father. How does that feel? Yes, it feels very nice. Uh, I have a lot of people that I know here that are coming to watch for me and that always gives a little bit of that extra boost. You showed that the legs are good for next week. Yeah, for sure. I'm uh, very satisfied with how the weekend uh, has been. I've trained a lot on my specific uh, accelerations, and I think um, yeah, today was a good example that I'm, uh, I'm uh, on the right level uh, for the Worlds. Thank you very much. So Tune Arts has done what he needed to do. He has finished second again, and with it has confirmed his status as the welcome champion for second successive year. Tone Arts is going to collect that final white jersey very shortly on the podium. Belgian star has got the victory. Tone Arts, how happy are you with the second uh, consecutive World Cup victory? Yes, I'm very happy. Of course, this is the most prestigious uh, class classification of the whole season. Uh, it's very international with all the races all over Europe and the two, uh, the two races in America. Um, last year I have some victories, but this year was a, a year without victory in the World Cup. But I'm pretty happy that I can take the white jersey once again. What was the feeling uh, today in the legs? Uh, I was pretty good, I think. I was in the first lap the, f the, the only one rider who can follow Mathieu. Uh, he was riding immediately uh, at a high pace and, and full gas in my eyes. But uh, after that, it was just following for me, uh, stay in front of the group. And at the last laps, uh, it was a battle between me and Eliezer Beat. And I I'm happy that I can, uh, can jump the barriers because I think I can uh, take an advantage there and take the second place today. What will be possible next week in Switzerland? Yeah, I don't know what's the track there. Uh, it's uh, it's a big question for all of us. Uh, nobody knows how what we're going to see there. Uh, but at this lap, it's pretty fast, and I was I was in pretty good shape. Uh, last uh, week, it was a little bit slower, and I was also good. So I think I don't have to be scared for all conditions. Uh, maybe ice or snow is not what I like. But uh, I saw the news, uh, the weather forecast, and uh, we see that it's going to rain next week. So I'm happy with that. Good luck with that. Thank you. So now we can have the podium celebrations to uh, present Tone Arts with that final World Cup jersey, along with the uh, presentation of the top three finishers in today's Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup final round in Hogerheide. Third place, the diminutive figure of Ellie Isabit. Second, Tone Arts, perpetual second, you might say. 
All down lands to, uh, to a victory. Of course, the perpetual winner, Matthew van der Poel. Of the Dillon at UCI, Sagergos Welcome, organized today here in Hogenheide. Dames en heren, graag uw aandacht voor de officiële prijstrekking na de finale manche bij deze wereldbeker veldrijden. De grote prijs, Adrie van der Poel, hier in Hogenheide. In third place, representing Belgium as member of the Bauhausen Bingo team. Uit België met een mooie derde plaats hier in Hogerheide. Eli Isebiet. <applaus> Provisa Eli knappe cross. And we gaan een beloning. That is a bit not equal to the, uh, the effort of uh, Tunarts today, or indeed of uh, Matthew van der Poel. But he'll celebrate his string of successes. Three at the beginning of the season, a great win last week in Norway. It's four victories across the season. He's a bit, has uh, much more to come as well. Still very much at the outside of his cyclocross career as an elite. In second place, representing Belgium as member of the Telenet Balwaze Lions team. In tweede plaats, de man van Telenet, Toon Arts. Proficia Toon. Got a few fans in today, isn't he, Toon Arts? Well, just a smile, he's a popular figure. Got a big fan club. Puts a few, uh, few fans on the door. The flowers of Filippo are there, uiteraard, there for Toon Arts, with a nice second place today, here in the great prize, Adrie van der Poel. Proficia Toon. And then, yeah, but if you think that was a cheer, will you hear this one? The winner today in Hogenheide as reigning world champion as member of the Alpecin Phoenix team. Dames and heren, the winner of vandaag hier in Hogenheide, the man van Phoenix Alpecin, Matje van der Poel. Five times the winner on his uh, in his local event. For the winner of the Brabantse Wall, and the kussen and bloemen mogen komen for the winner. Ja, en daar is Mijntje namens JF Bode met de bloemen en uiteraard... Celebrations all round for the local crowd. Wat een podium, wat een wedstrijd en er komen nog veel licitaties. Ja, felicitaties worden gegeven door de heer Martijn van Gruithuizen. 25th van birthday, birthday just a week ago. Matthew van der Poel. Onder andere sport in zijn portefeuille. Racing in his quarter century. Steven Adriaan Steen. Also in a diminishing powers and they're surely only increasing at this point. Zij hebben de top drie mogen feliciteren. Dames en heren, het moment is aangebroken waarop wij heel graag u aandacht top three in the final round of the Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup. It's Matthew van der Poel that gets the win ahead of Tunarts and Elisabeth. To the national anthem of the Netherlands. of the National Anthem of the Netherlands to celebrate another great home success. Which is uh, both of the elite races today and uh, super success for Matthew van der Poel is fifth here. And that's the day going for gold here on the Brabant Salaal. The podium is by the elite men. The photo is set by the many photographers. The top three here with Elisabeth, with Tonaars and Matthieu van der Poel. There comes still a second part. We're going to the final ceremony. Van dit Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup seizoen. Met de uiteindelijke beste drie in de eindafrekening. Voor wat dat eindklassement betreft. Van der Poel's work is done. But uh, he is a bit and most particularly Toon Arts have a little bit of further, Voorzitter van de Veldrincommissie further work van de to uh, complete before they can focus on uh, Switzerland we next week. invite once again Mr. Harald Tiedemann Hansen, president of the UCI Cyclocross Commission and member of the management committee of the UCI. Er zal zometeen worden bijgestaan ook door de heer Martijn van Gruithuizen, lid van de gedeputeerde staten van de provincie Noord-Brabant. En uiteraard ook nog met de burgemeester, de heer Steven Adriaanse, van deze mooie wielere gemeente op de Brabantse wal, de gemeente Woensrecht.
Daar komen ze, de nummers 1, 2 en 3. Beginnen doen we met de derde in de einduitslag van deze editie. Van de completion de of this year's uh, World the Cup. With great success for Town Arts and for Belgium. Derde plaats in het eindklassement van de Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup 2020 uit België. Michael van Turenhout. Wat is dat, Michael? So third for uh, Michael Van Turenhout, very much in the mix uh, throughout the season and indeed today. And he completes the World Cup season on the podium in third place. And then in second place of the final his teammate Ellie is a bit altogether more diminutive figure of the on the outside of what's so sure, so sure to be a great the uh, career at the very top level. For the second on this occasion. And then, last but not least, the end winner of the Tillenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup. The, the final World Cup jersey of the year is going to be presented to the man who's taken the title. He's a very popular figure. He's got a huge following here, and indeed across the border in Belgium. More particularly, he's brought a lot of fans with him here into Brabant, and it's uh, Tone Arts that gets that white jersey. He's held for so much of the year. Head of the uh, UCI Cyclocross Commission, Harold. Well, Tiedema Hansen is the man that uh, presents that final white jersey to Tone Arts. Your top three, Michael Van Turenhout, Ali Isabel, and accepting the congratulations of all around him, Tone Arts. Felicitaties zijn er uiteraard ook van de burgemeester hier van Loonsrecht, de heer Steven Adriaanse, voor de mannen daar op het podium. En well, that's it from uh, Hoger Heide. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the final round of the UCI Telenet uh, Cyclocross World Cup. It's a uh, World Cup success to Toon Arts. It's a race victory, another one to add to his, uh, uh, for uh, Matthew van der Poel. My name is Declan Quigley. It's goodbye for now. En de presentaties voor Michael van Toerenhout. En geef hem gerust nogmaals een welverdiende plaats met zijn knappe derde plek in het eindklassement. Michael van Toernat, bloemen opkomende voor de nummer 2. Ja, en dat betekent de bloemen en de felicitaties daar nu ook voor Eli Isebiet. Proficiat Eli. En dan gaan we nog één keer een daverend applaus vragen op het moment dat hij ook zijn boeket in ontvangst neemt. Eindwinnaar van de Tillenet UC World Cup, Toon Aert! En vertoon ook de dik verdiende zoene en de mooie bloem uit handen van Mijntje van haar over Rommelis namens JF Mode. Proficiat mannen, ze mogen zo meteen nog een stapje voorwaarts zetten. De laatste officiële fotomomenten. Mannen die we ook veel succes wensen uiteraard toekomend weekend daar in Dubendorf. Vanaf deze plaats dank wij ook de heer Martijn van Gruithuizen, lid van onder andere de provincie Noord-Brabant. Gedeputeerd staan van de provincie Noord-Brabant. Met onder andere sport in de vuilen, voor de vuilen. Dank ook de heer Steven Adriaanse, burgemeester van deze binnere gemeente Woensrecht. En dank ook, thank you to Mr. Harald Tiedemann Hansen, representative of the UCI. Wij danken het volledige organisatiecomité, wij danken het talrijk opgekomen publiek. We hopen dat u er met volle teugen van genoten hebt. Wij waren blij dat u er was. Wij hebben een fantastische wiederdag achter de rug. Mooie wedstrijden gezien en Hogerheide was opnieuw de place to be. Ik dank ook collega Laurens van der Klunder. Nico de Muiter ook dank voor het verbaal ondersteunen deze dag inderdaad van alle wedstrijden hier op de Brabantse Wal. Hogerheide, u was wederom geweldig. Dank u wel en graag tot volgend jaar. Bye bye, tot ziens!